Hello YouTube, uh, this is going to be my video review of the Casio PRW3000 ProTrek. Um, this is my third ProTrek. I had a uh, PAW2500 and a um, no PAW2000 and a PRW2500. So this is my third installment. Uh, so go and check my other ones if you want to see uh, the reviews on the older models. Uh, the PAW is uh, pretty much what I would call the predecessor to this one. Uh, it's just a little bit bigger, uh, just a little bit different feature set, and it has room for just a little more data here across the top in the dot matrix portion. But anyway, on to this one. Uh, so this particular one, you might be wondering, you see that it's uh, it's got a gray case, kind of a khaki uh, band uh, with orange underneath and uh, a khaki and orange strap keeper uh, and it's nylon instead of the usual resin or the uh, the real high-end titanium uh, I thought that was kinda nice uh, when I saw that uh, available from a, uh, a Singapore seller on eBay so this is the PRW-3000B-5D uh, in case you want to find it or something like it uh, look for, for it from a Singapore seller. Uh, first off, let's look at the strap. Uh, here, I'll take off my my trusty AMW320. Also a great Casio classic here. And uh, I'll show you how this looks on my smallish wrist. Um, this is one thing, one place where I think Casio does a really good job as they can make a, they can make a pretty big uh, pretty big watch fit pretty well on a pretty small wrist. So I've got a, uh, a six and, and three quarter inch wrist and uh, I think it's just about perfect um, for kind of a tactical digital outdoor watch. It's just about a perfect fit you know it covers the, the top of the wrist but it doesn't want to it doesn't want to rotate around. Uh, even, you know, that's my, um, you know, partway snug setting where I prefer to wear it. If I'm going to be real active and, and sweaty and stuff like that, then um, then I'll wear it kind of loose. But you'll see, even when it's even when it's loose and there's a little room here, uh, it's, you know, it's got room to move. Uh, it's got room for my wrist to swell up underneath it a little bit. Uh, but it doesn't it doesn't tend to rotate around. Uh, and that's one of the brilliant things about this, uh, and a lot of the Casio watches actually, the, the G-Shocks and the Protrex. Um, the nylon band I think maybe breathes a little bit easier than the resin, uh, although Casio does a good job with their resin. They put ridges on the inside so that it doesn't stick to your skin. Um, there's what the inside looks like. But the key, the trick is these little winglets. Uh, I don't know if that's the official term or not, but that's what a lot of us call them on the uh, on the watch forums. Uh, but they have these little resin winglets that are kind of integrated through the strap here. And with that winglet, you can see it it uh, fits well. Let me get that out of there. That's kind of distracting. It fits well with the. Uh, it makes the the watch have kind of a, a curved overall shape to it whereas if it were just this big flat piece here uh, it would tend to rotate around on a smaller wrist so if you do have a big wrist uh, don't be afraid of this just plan on taking these uh, there's two little screws here you can just take those out and then take off the strap take out the winglets put it back together and then it'll fit a lot better on a uh, on a big wrist um, uh, one thing about the strap the vinyl keeper uh, it is a vinyl keeper, not uh, uh, resin or nylon. It just uh, it feels a little cheap. I don't think it's going to be a durability issue. Uh, it doesn't tend to wander around on the wrist, so um, it's been kind of fine from that standpoint. Put it on my wrist here for a little bit. Just give you kind of a uh, an all-around view. So. That's what it looks like on a six and three quarter inch wrist. You'll notice that it has these um, 
these little metal rings. Let me zoom in for a little bit here. You can see those closer. It has these rings that have been punched into the uh, nylon and you can see on some of them it's kind of a little, there's a little fuzz, you know, sticking up here and there. And that's because when they punch the rings in here, it kind of cut the nylon threads a little bit. So uh, it's nothing that's going to cause the, the strap to fall apart or just come unraveled or anything, but, um, you know, it kind of, uh, it doesn't look quite as clean as it could. So if that's something that's going to bother you, you probably just want to go with the, uh, the resin strap or the titanium bracelet. And uh, Casio does make a really nice titanium bracelet. They're quite susceptible to scratches, but um, they're also very comfortable if you're not the uh, obsessive compulsive type. Um, I'll take it off my wrist now and start going through some other things. Uh, another thing you'll notice before we leave the strap completely is that it's not tapered. Uh, it's about 22 millimeters, not tapered. Um, it'll go f to quit fit quite a, a big size wrist. I'm uh, on my six and three quarter inch wrist. I'm about here, so you can see each uh, each hole looks like another quarter inch or so. It'll fit uh, quite a big wrist. My trusty Casio display stand here. While we go through the rest of these features. Um, the bezel, uh, I'll zoom in here towards the top. Uh, this is one of my nitpicks on the watch. Uh, you can see it's a little scratched up here, just right around that area there. I'll zoom in a little closer. Come on. Yep. There we go. You can see there's, um, you know, it's some of the paint, I guess the bezel is painted, and they painted a different color for each color scheme. But this is something, I picked these scratches up when I was hiking one day, and I can't even remember hitting it on something. If I did hit it on something, it was something very light, and it was uh, probably under my sleeve at the time. So the fact that that paint scratched off so easily is, uh, is a little bit of a disappointment. Now, it is an outdoor watch, so... Uh, it's not a big deal. I don't. It's not something I keep to be pretty or anything, uh, you know, and not like a, a real collector's piece or anything like that, but just something worth pointing out because I know uh, we collectors can be a bit obsessive compulsive. Uh, one thing I like about this watch quite a lot is a display. Uh, you know, 90% of the time, at least for most of us, we're just going to use it for, for telling the time and date, right? Let's just be honest with ourselves. Um, we're not adventuring all the time. So that being the case, it's nice that they, they dedicate this big part of the display uh, and have nice big dark uh, LCD digits. Um, just nice and clear, you know. Uh, that's one thing I like. And then another thing I like is that the date here is kind of uh, adaptable. Uh, by pushing the adjust button here on the upper left, you can have uh, day date, or you can have month date, or you can have the, uh, the barometric trend pr plot of the last uh, several hours. So that's nice. I like it on day date. Then you have seconds ticking away down here. Um, up here, let's see if I can get an angle where there's not too much glare. Looks like no unless I hold it up with my hand. But you see this little triangle here? Um, if you see that, that means that it's synced with the atomic clock the night before. Uh, so you know that you're within, uh, you know, less than half a second of, of true atomic time if you see that triangle. And I found that it's not picky either. Um, they say you're supposed to keep it in a, um, in a window on the side of your home that, uh, that faces where the nearest uh, atomic time transmitter is, but it's not that picky. Um, I've, I live in Chicago, uh, the nearest transmitter is in Boulder, Colorado, and I've got it facing, um, I've got it kind of near an east facing window, but it still manages to get the, the signal either through a north facing window or through the walls, so it's not that uh, picky. Um, then down here you can see a little uh, PS, let's zoom in a little bit.
you can see the little um, PS here. That means it's in power saving mode. So if the, the solar cell around the outside doesn't pick up any light for a while, then it just turns off the display to save energy. And then down here, uh, you have H, M, and L. That's the, uh, the charge level on the battery. So right now it's, it's got a high charge level. I'm not going to go through all the specs, but, uh, the specs, but it'll hold a charge for just months and months. Um, all right, uh, the next thing I want to show before I even get into these other modes, zoom back out a little bit. It's got a lot of modes. So we go here, sunrise, sunset, uh, altitude event recorder, stopwatch, timer, alarms, world time. Uh, when was the last time it synced and then back to home. So if I wanted to go in and let's say I'm messing around with the stopwatch, right? And now I'd, I can hit mode, 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 mode and scroll all the way back through. Or this has got kind of a neat feature uh, wherein I can just hold the mode down, press and hold the mode button down and it'll return to, to, uh, to the home screen. And watch across the top part, it'll tell you what to do. Uh, hold it down and just gives a quick double beep, beep and takes you right back to the home. So that's kind of nice. And then when you, you know, go back to the stopwatch, then it's still... See how that works? Once you get used to it, it's very slick. Um, okay, now let's just go quickly through the modes because I'm getting a little rambly here. I can feel it already. The first one is the sunrise and sunset data. Now this is the main reason I picked it over something like a... Uh, like a PRG 270 or something. I just like having that. I don't, you know, I live in Chicago. I don't have any use for a, for a tide graph. Uh, so this model has the, uh, the sunrise sunset time uh, instead. So here, for example, on the top, it says that on January 5th, uh, sunrise will be 720 in the morning and sunset will be 434 in the afternoon. And it knows where you are because when you're doing the initial setup, you, you tell it where your home time zone is. So I said Chicago, and it says, okay, I know where it is. Um, and then in little, in little print here, I don't know if you can quite make it out. It, has, it says sunrise and then points up and then sunset and then points down. So um, in case you don't remember that. And what's and a new, neat thing about it is if you're planning, like for a hunting trip, let's say I'm gonna go hunting in a couple of days. I don't know what, I don't wanna know what the sunrise and sunset is today, but I wanna know, let's say on the 10th. So this uh, button down here goes forward, this button here goes backward. Um, some people think it should be up to go forward, down to go backward, but I think about it as clockwise to go forward and counterclockwise to go backward. So just push this. Here's the data for the 6th, 7th, 8, 9, 10. So on the 10th, it's going to be 4.39 p.m. the sunsets, and then 7.19 a.m. So that's kind of a neat feature, I think, especially if you're really you know, going to be hiking or hunting or fishing or anything like that. Next, we have the event recorder. This is kind of uh, kind of neat. You know, a lot of people aren't going to use it all the time. Again, I live in the Chicago suburbs. I'm not doing a lot of elevation. It's pretty much flat here. But when I do go somewhere that I think is noteworthy, I can just, uh, I think it's this lower right button. If I just push and hold that for a second, it'll record uh, the time, the date, and the altitude. Oh, no, that's to set the altitude. I don't remember which. Oh, it's scrolling through the data now. Gosh, which button is it to... No, that's some of the other, and that goes backwards, so it must be this one. Okay. Oh, that just cleared it. That just cleared my first record. All right, well, I have to admit, I don't remember how to make a, uh, a date... Re uh, maybe it's... Yeah, I think it's in the altimeter mode. If I go back to the altimeter mode... And then I push, uh, no, that goes into parameter. All right, well, I'll have to look that up later. But anyway, when you're in this mode, uh, this, is, this shows you the data for these events that you can record. So for instance, on, 
August 9th at 7.36 p.m. I was in an altitude of 1,275 feet. Number four, on that same day I was at 1,340 feet at 7.38, etc. I'll have to look up or you can look up in the manual and if you really are curious how to record that. And we have the usual stopwatch. This is nice, it has the hours on the dot matrix display on the top and then minutes, seconds, tenths of seconds in the main display and then your time of day in the bottom. I really like this because sometimes you're out walking or running or you're on a car trip or whatever you're doing. You want that stopwatch to keep going but you don't want to have to go back to the home screen to see what the time is and that's what one of the things that's brilliant about this uh, and I think this is on most of the uh, the ProTrek watches and a lot of the G-Shocks and uh, on that twin sensor that I like, the SGW100. Um, so you can leave it in stopwatch mode, still know what time of day it is. Really nice. And it's not like a mechanical chronograph where you have hands that are in the way. Um, and then we got the usual Casio chronograph. So on the bottom here, this will start and stop. If you hit this while it's running, it'll split so that you can write down the time. Hit it again, it starts going again. Stop, reset. So a pretty basic stopwatch. And then we got the countdown timer. Uh, this is one of my favorite features. I, I won't even buy a digital watch without this anymore. I use this, for instance, four minutes is for timing uh, how much I like to steep my, uh, my black tea. So I start that counting down. Again, I still have the time of day here on the bottom. So. Then we have the alarm mode. You can see it, it said uh, alarm one, alarm two, alarm three, alarm four, alarm five, and then it goes on or off. So you get to the alarm that you want, and then you push the center button here to turn it on or off. And then this is the snooze alarm. So you have four alarms and then the snooze. This one will just keep going. Uh, you know, it'll go off every five minutes or something. Or it might be nine or ten minutes until you manually go into the alarm mode and cancel it. You can't just hit a button and turn it off like in every other alarm. So if you have this on your nightstand next to you and you're trying to wake up, the, the darn thing is relentless. It'll go off every five minutes for like an hour. Just don't wear it on your wrist, you know, leave it on the table next to you. That works better. And then we have the hourly time signal, and you can set how many minutes past the hour uh, when it chimes. I like it to go off on the hour. Remind myself to get up and stretch it in my desk job every hour. And then we got the world time mode. Uh, this button makes it go east. So we got Hong Kong, Beijing, Taipei. Uh, I don't know what that is. Is that in Australia? Oh no, Seoul, Tokyo, Adelaide, Guam. Is that Guam? Yeah, I think so, etc. And then this button will take you back west. And you can hold it down and it'll blast through them pretty fast. And then this is nice too. So when you're traveling, you can just leave it here. You know, for instance, I'm in Hong Kong. I want to know what the time is in Hong Kong, first and foremost, right? But then I can just look here at the bottom and I can say, oh, yeah, at home, it's uh, 9.58 p.m. in Hong Kong. It's 11.58 a.m. This is kind of like your uh, GMT mode, if you will. And last but not least, it tells you when it received uh, the atomic signal. So, for instance, January 5th, that was this morning at just after midnight and receive the atomic signal and synchronized. So there you have it. Um, uh, let's see, the strap, if you wanted to, you could, uh, I'm gonna zoom out a little bit here now, you could take this strap off if you decided later that you wanted to uh, get a titanium uh, bracelet. Uh, first of all, good luck finding one. Uh, but you can probably order it from Casio if you're if you're willing to pay out the nose for it, uh, or you can get a resin strap. Maybe you know might be able to find those on eBay or the uh, uh, the Casio supplier. But what it comes down to, all you have to do is uh, is take out these two screws here, 
and then that'll let the, the strap and the, uh, the winglet just pull out and then it'll be easy to replace the strap. Uh, and one last thing, you'll notice there's lots of different, uh, let me get a nice close up of the screen here. There's lots of different shades of the screen. So for example, this one's got the, uh, the orange trim uh, with the winglet and uh, the orange underneath and it kind of it matches with the khaki. You've got orange stitching here. So what they do is they put like a slightly orange tinted uh, filter over the LCD. Uh, you'll see them that the blue ones have a bluish tinted filter, uh, the yellow ones have a yellowish tinted filter, etc. So that's something that you could change if you were willing to take the risk to take it apart. Um, so I've showed you all the, the great things about this watch. Uh, it's my favorite digital watch by a mile. Uh, I paid, I think, about 210 or something in, uh, in the middle of 2014 for this watch. Uh, and it, I paid a premium. I paid about an extra 20 or 25 bucks to get this color scheme. Uh, at the time, only the gray uh, resin and the blue resin were available uh, through Amazon in the U.S., so I was happy to pay a little bit more. But anyway, if I were to nitpick the things that I don't like about it, uh, the, the bezel is scratch, um, pretty sensitive to scratches. They have some higher end models like some Japan domestic market uh, models where uh, this, this uh, is a steel bezel instead of aluminum, but it's not really the material that's in question here, it's the finish, right? So I'm not sure if that's gonna help or not. Um, it does still have a mineral crystal. Again, you can get that uh, uh, Japan domestic market model that has a sapphire crystal, but one thing that's worth noting, and if I if I zoom in here and I show you this at the right angle, you can see that that bezel stands well proud of the of the uh, crystal, right? So I found that when I scratch a mineral crystal, what happens is that I've I've got it on my wrist here, and I'm swinging my wrist around, and then I'll just hit something kind of at an angle from off on the side. Uh, so they found out from the G-Shocks and everything that if you just have the bezel raised up uh, from, the le uh, from the crystal, that that'll protect the crystal from like 90% of all the scratches that you would get anyway. So even though it's just a mineral crystal and not a fancy sapphire crystal, uh, I, don't, I have found that it is not susceptible to scratches. The bezel will take a beating maybe if you're, uh, if you're treating the watch rough, but just consider that bezel sacrificial and uh, you'll probably be happier for it in the end. Um, and then if I were to nitpick one other thing, I guess maybe the, uh, you know, the fact that, that, uh, that when they punch these rings into the strap, it cut the, some of the nylon threads here. And this is just aesthetic. This is not a, a, a functional weakness at all. But if you're the kind of person that really wants to you know, get a rugged outdoor watch and then keep it shiny and mint condition, then you probably want to avoid the ones with the nylon strap and either get the resin strap or a, a titanium bracelet. Uh, but, it, but again, just to um, strap it back on here and give you a glamour shot again on my, uh, my six and three quarter inch circumference wrist. The things I like about it, uh, nice big uh, main display, um, adaptable, oops, the altimeter button, adaptable uh, date display, uh, barometric trend. I just realized I forgot to show you the actual ABC stuff. Altimeter. Uh, this you have to program because it, it goes by uh, air pressure. So if you know your altitude, it, it, the watch knows the air pressure, you kind of synchronize them. Uh, then it'll it can equate the two for a while but as the weather changes uh, that changes too so when you're going to be depending on that altitude measurement you have to remember to um, uh, to calibrate it to some altitude sign of the, of the mountain that you're on so from the home screen I just hit the LT button here uh, and that took me into that screen if I hit mode it'll go back to the home screen if I want the barometric trend uh, the barometric um, reading um, and it'll show me that in numerical. I've got it to show inches of mercury. Um, you can also have it show um, millimeters of, uh, is it kilopascals? I think that's what it is. And then this is the temperature here. Uh, and you'll see a lot of people comment that that temperature 
oh, that temperature is useless because you can't take the, uh, the air temperature when it's off your wrist. And that's true. It would be more useful if it could take a temperature, uh, you know, an ambient air temperature while it was on your wrist. But what it does is it uses the, uh, the stainless steel uh, back as, as a way to normalize the temperature so that it doesn't change too quickly and give you inaccurate readings. So uh, that's only really useful after it's been off your wrist for about 20 minutes. You can use it to measure temperatures at different places in your house or if you're outside you're going to be stationary for a little while you can take it off and measure the ambient temperature. Uh, you've got your you know the barometric trend plot we can see the air pressure went up you know for a day or so and then it came down. Now it's dropped way down. Sure enough it's, it's uh, snowing like crazy now. And then I can go right to one of these other ABC features or I can go back. So here we'll go to compass. And uh, let's see. I've kind of got this at an angle so that you can see it in the camera. But there's a, there's a, a, a triple dot pointer here. And then these other markings on the compass that also kind of rotate around with it. Uh, if you if you go and look at my review of the PAW 2000, you'll see it had a dual layer LCD, so it kind of projected the the north uh, needles uh, above on top of all this other stuff. But it actually made it a little less clear, a little less easy to see, uh, and I think they they did it as a cost saving thing too. This one is a lot less bulky than the uh, than the old PAW 2000, and it has the uh, the latest generation sensor too. So. Uh, back to home. So I guess I really like the return to home. I like the timer. I like that the time of day is visible in most modes. Um, everything is really intuitive to use if you're used to uh, Casios. And uh, the six button interface is great. Uh, I forgot to mention this button here is the, uh, is the light. So you got compass, barometer, altimeter, light, mode, and adjust. The six button interface uh, makes it very easy to, uh, uh, to program. So uh, stand by for just a just a second here. I'll zoom out a little bit and I'll go turn out the light and give you a, a backlight shot. Okay. Yeah, not really very not ideal, but you can see anyway that there we go. I've got it set for one and a half seconds so it doesn't drain down the battery too fast, but there you have it. It's plenty bright. So there you have it guys, uh, Casio PRW3000. And this is the 3000B-5D uh, variant uh, in case you want to find this exact one. So thanks for watching, uh, leave your comments, uh, check out some of my other uh, watch videos if you want to.